We've just finished Dido's speech to Aeneas as she sensed that he is packing up to leave. And now we will hear Aeneas's reply. So this is Virgil's Aeneid, book six. We're starting at line 331. Dix serat. And that refers to Dido. She had spoken. Henceforth, we get the ille, and this will be Aeneas. He was holding emota lumina. Their emota because of the monitis yawis. And he's obnixus. Obnixus. He's resolute. He needs to do this to premebatis curam. Sub pectora. So what do you think at that point? Does Aeneas get any points for trying? Our editor, or pardon me, our poet, our narrator might even suggest, eh, give him a chance. Let's see what you think as the speech goes on. And then he replies with a few words. The grammar in the next sentence is remarkably complex. If you've already been trying this for a couple of goes, it's really hard. I would pose this question to you. What do you suppose Virgil is trying to indicate about Aeneas or his state of mind by using syntax that is this complex or perhaps not so much complex but unclear? Consider that as we go through this. And let's begin with the quae plurima in our relative clause. And we'll get back to the ego te in a second. Okay, so all of the things or many of the things which you are able to account for in telling, and your book helps you with fando there, that's going to be the gerundive of for, that archaic verb meaning to say or speak. Okay, never queen will I deny. Okay, so plurima here will stand out as that neuter plural object of negabo um, and we'll come back to that in a second. Okay, so never will I deny these things, queen. Never will I deny. Now we can go back to incorporate the te and the promeritam, which will come across as actually promeritam esse. Never will I deny, Queen, that you have deserved the things which you are able to enumerate or list. Okay? So try to figure out what he's just said to Dido, how he's done it, how do you think she would have received that. That's how you navigate your way through that one. Next, there's more. Nor, future tense again, will it ever be gay, but will it ever displease or cause me to regret, okay, and to have remembered, and anytime you have in Latin a verb of remembering or forgetting, it will always take a genitive. There's the genitive to go with this part. So it will never displease him to be mindful of these things while, while two things. While he has his memory, your book suggests that you supply a sum in there. That makes good sense. While memory itself is, or I have my memory. Pardon me. That's what you want. And while spirit itself, talking about his life breath, his, his living, rules these limbs. So as long as I live, Dido, and notice that he actually uses her more familiar name, Elissa, which is how Dido is also referred. I'll always remember you. Okay, now on to business. Pro re. Notice that your text tells you pro re is a very legalistic phrase that's used in that context. He is truly setting forth his cross-examination. At this point, he is about 
very legalistically and unemotionally defending his course of action. So pro re, loquar, future tense, a few things. He didn't intend to do a few things. Let's see what he never intended to do. The main verb sperasti. He never hoped to abscondere in furto or with furto, so that'll be an ablative there. Okay. Hank fuga. Never intended to do that. This ne is short for noli. Your book tells you you should interpret that as noli fingra. Don't pretend. So don't think, he says, that I hoped to hide this escape, this flight. Didn't mean to. Nor ever did I extend these things, which were lightning flashes in the cave, of this. Or did I ever come into, and foetus is a neuter noun, into these pacts? And he's specifically referring to a pact of marriage. Okay. Now, further, here's his if. If, he essentially says, if it were up to me. What he says here are, if the fates allow, that's the deponent for patior, if the fates allow me to do geruitam according to meis auspiciis, and if the fates allow me to componere cares, curas, by my sponta. There is your ablative there. So if that were the case, here are the following results. You've got three things happening. First of all, here's your verb colorem. I would, and that means to cultivate, to be in the Trojan city first. And I would cultivate, be with, worship, be among the sweet dual case, dual case for dual case, reliquias, the sweet remnants of mine, of my city, of my people. That's the first thing. Secondly, the tall towers of Priam, Maneret. And thirdly, I would have placed, and Pergama here is neuter plural, described by Rakidiwa. I would have placed by my hand Troy renewed for those conquered. Wiktis here is the participle of Winko acting as an indirect object to those people conquered, to my people. So I love you, dear. It's been great. But I have to tell you these things. And if it were up to me, it would be like this. He goes farther. Aeneas does. Said, said nunc. Said nunc talia magnam grinaius Apollo and the liciae sortes. Your subjects here are grinaius Apollo and liciae sortes. Okay. They, you say here is that alternative a runs ending. They order me to capesera italian. Hick. Hick. Powerful anaphora there. Imagine how that feels to Dido as she hears this. Now, at this point in his logic, Aeneas is trying to present a parallel, saying to Dido, well, why would you begrudge me this opportunity if? He starts with the if. So, if the Arches of Cartaginus and if the Aspectus of the Libicae Urbis, if each of those things separately, de tinit te 
Poinisa, you as a Phoenician, is calling upon her patriotism to qualify his. And that's a, an iffy word I use there and probably shouldn't. But her nationalistic interest here is what he's drawing on to create a parallel. So if that's true for her, then in Widia asked, why is it enviable to you? Or very loosely, you could say, why do you begrudge the fact that at last the Tukrians will step to establish that the Tukrians establish an Alsonian land or settle rather in an Alsonian land? If you can do it, why can't we? Moreover, the dreaded FAS its divine right. Fas est. Understand an est here? Est quaerere extera regna. We have to go find our own place. In the next passage, or the next transition here, you have to take this in the word order to feel the full impact of the suspense of the nominative singular subject. Let's try to walk through this passage like that. Me, direct object. Ankaisai patris. Quotiens, adverb. Whenever in this period of time, with umentibus umbris, nox operet terras. Anaphora, quotiens astringne surgunt. So whenever these things happen to me of my father Achilles, there's a verb. There's your main verb. Do we have the subject yet? No. But something ad monets me, insomnis, and the turbida aha imago terra. Turbida imago, talking about the ghost of my father Anchises. He verbs me, insomnis, during these times that this has to happen. Okay. Moreover, what about the potential insult that I would be performing to my boy Ascanius? Okay. Gari capitis goes here. And your verb is fraudo, the first person singular. Okay. Um, also is something that advises him of this. And he says, my boy, whom I would uh, defraud. I, I would be holding him back. I would be, in fact, depriving him of a kingdom. Because Fraudo must have the ablative, the kingdom of Hesperia, of the western land. And interpret fatalibus from fatalis here not so much as fatal, but as destined. Destined is definitely the better translation of that particular adjective to describe the arwis. I have to do this, honey. I'm really sorry about it, but... There we go. Do make sure that you understand the admonit here functions with puerascanius as well. Line 356. He's wrapping up the speech. And if this isn't evidence enough, he thinks, for Dida to accept his actions, then he's not quite sure what else to do. So even now, even now, Interpres divum, this is divorum, sent by ipso Yowe, my goodness sakes, Jove himself. I swear, he says, and I swear by my head. Okay, he has detulated the mandata. Through Kelleris Auras. And seriously, he says, I saw the God, I myself, in clear light. I saw him entering the Muros. And I, there's your next main verb, drank in his wokem, 
with these very ears. He concludes with an imperative, de sine, end, end or cease. And this particular form has to have an imperative that goes with it. And he says, stop inflaming, me quote qua, both you and me, tris querelis. And here's the bottom line. Italian non sponte sequor. <laughs>